Hello, my friends in YouTube world scattered all across the world. Sorry I missed you yesterday. I was busy. Uh, I've got a lot of property taxes to pay back in Texas and here. And I was trying to deal with those plus do some other chores that needed to be done. And I just didn't get around to doing a video yesterday. Uh, sad to say, I didn't spend much time with the Lord yesterday, so I didn't really have anything to give you. But I had business matters to deal with, and I kept putting them off and putting them off and putting them off, and I finally had to do them, so I did them. I've got one more that I'm trying to get through to that I haven't been able to get through yet. Maybe they'll call me back when I'm doing this video. I don't know, but... It's one down in Texas, in the central part of Texas, that I haven't heard back from yet. But anyway, I want to talk to you briefly on faith again. Faith is so important in our lives, y'all. We've got to have faith. We've got to live on faith. I've got some notes over there on the computer, and I've got my Bible. I've got a couple of scripture passages, short ones I'm going to read to you. I'm going to try to not look at the computer and just go by what's in my brain. And, uh, you know, with the memory that long, that's probably not going to work very good. So I do have the notes over here, but I'm going to try. <clears throat> you know, when I became a Christian, uh, I had friends literally all over the world. I, I traveled all over the world. I was a problem solver. I handled all of my own problems and... I handle problems for people and businesses all over the world, and I would travel all over the world to help solve problems, and I was very good at it. You know, the problems that popped up in my own personal life were nothing compared to the problems that I've got in my personal life now, but I always handled them, took care of them. They were never a problem. Now, <laughs> my problems are monstrous, and I've got a lot of them, seems like constantly. And instead of me trying to deal with them and handle them like I used to do, I just turn them over to the Lord. And for me, as a new Christian, I've been a Christian 21 years, that was hard to do at first. It was very hard to do at first because I was so used to handling problems on my own and I was very good at handling problems that I just neglected turning my problems over to the Lord. You know, it was almost as though I didn't want him to know I had any problems, but I did. Everybody has problems. And I started turning them over to him and... He started taking care of them for me, and that <clears throat> made me happy. It gave me joy that I cannot explain. You have to experience it yourself. Several times at the very beginning, I would leave that problem at the feet of Jesus for two or three days, and he hadn't handled it for me, and so I'd go back and pick it up and bring it back home with me and try to deal with it myself because my faith was not strong then. Finally, after maybe a year or two or three, I realized what the problem was that I didn't have enough faith or a strong enough faith to just leave the problem at the feet of Jesus and for me to be patient and wait for him to handle it in his way in his time, and according to his plan for me in my life. Some of the problems that I took to him did not meet his approval. They did not fit into his plan for my life, so he did not answer them. He did not help me with them, and he showed me why, and I was okay with it then. You know, those problems became non-existent. Because his plan for my life did not match what those problems were going to solve. So he didn't take care of them. And I'm grateful to him for that. 
<clears throat> but he did answer many of them. But when I realized I had a shortage of faith, I started praying for God to increase my faith. I had read in the Bible where that was a prayer he would answer. And friends, you know, increasing your faith is good. And I encourage every one of you to ask God to increase your faith from time to time. But like a good school teacher who gives you lessons for weeks or months or years, there's always going to be a test at the end to see if you learned. So when you ask God to increase your faith, expect him to put something humongous in your life to test your new faith. The biggest one he gave to me was in 2015, early 2015, or may, actually, it was around November in 2014, I had a humongous problem in my life. And I tried to deal with it myself. I spent a ton of money trying to deal with that problem. I mean, a lot of money, a, a whole lot more money than this house costs that I'm in now. It was a lot of money, and I, I didn't solve that problem. And I turned it over to the Lord. And two or three weeks later, he hadn't solved it, so I went and picked it up and tried it again. And I still couldn't handle it, still couldn't solve it. And so then I prayed and asked God to increase my faith, knowing that with faith, all things are possible. And I knew that that problem in my life could be solved according to God's will for my life, the plan that he has for my life. And I even quoted him scriptures backing it up. Well, friends, he increased my faith, but he put that big problem in front of me to see if I would live on faith. And I did. And he solved the problem, a problem that I could not solve. I think it's the only problem I ever had that I could not solve. And it was a big one. I'm talking about huge, and it was on the other side of the world, too. I couldn't solve that problem. Going there, I couldn't solve it. Being there in person, I couldn't solve it. And I'm talking about like a 15-hour flight from here to there one way. Maybe 17 hours, I don't remember, but it was a long, long flight. And uh, God solved it. It took three or four months not two or three weeks like I was used to waiting. <laughs> it took three or four months, but he solved it, and I was elated. I was elated. I was sorry that I had wasted my time and a ton of money trying to solve it myself because he handled it in a whole lot shorter time than I tried, and it didn't cost me anything except exercising my faith that he had given me. Friends, just do it. Just do it. Let me also add that as a new Christian or someone who is just now learning to live on faith, your friends are going to be watching you like a hawk. They're waiting for you to trip and fall. They're waiting for you to run back to the feet of Jesus and pick up that problem you left there. You need to leave it alone and have faith that Jesus will take care of it. Just know before you place it there that it must be in accordance to, to God's plan for your life, and it will be answered. If it's not in accordance to God's plan for your life, it will not be answered. So don't, don't even go there if you know God will not like your problem. Because it ain't nothing going to happen, friend. Also know that your walk in faith, your friends will be watching you. And if you slip and fall, you're going to become a hypocrite to them instantly. And you don't want that to happen. 
we must be strong in our faith. We must walk in faith and not by sight. Hebrews chapter 11, the verse, first verse in chapter 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. That is pretty self-explanatory. Faith is things, anything that we hope for. The second part of that verse says, it is the evidence of things not seen. We know it's there, but we don't see it yet. In faith, we're hoping to get it. We must be strong in our faith, dear friend. And over in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, says, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. This is the word of God. Yesterday I was talking to somebody, and I told him, Instead of spending a few minutes a day in the Bible and in prayer, we need to spend hours every day in the Bible and praying. The more we pray, the more we read God's holy word, the closer we are going to become to the Lord the better we can hear the word of our Lord speaking to us, the more often we will hear God speaking to us through God, the Holy Spirit. People often say, God never talks to me. <laughs> and I ask, how much time do you spend talking to him? How much time do you spend reading his word? And the answer is usually none or very little. Why should God want to talk to you if you don't give him time talking to him and reading his word? It doesn't matter what is going on in your life, my dear friends. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what is going on in your life. You must take time to spend with the Lord. Praying and reading the Bible. Pray without ceasing. It doesn't matter who you're with, where you're at, what you're doing. You can still pray. Pray without ceasing as we are commanded in the Bible to do. If you're around other people, you can pray thoughts to God. God reads your thoughts. Sometimes I have prayers I want to pray to God that I do not want Satan to hear. I will send God prayer thoughts. devil cannot read our minds, but he can hear our voices. So a lot of my prayers are just prayer thoughts, and God hears them, and God answers them. we got to live in faith, friends. And to do that, we've got to be close to the Lord. And to be close to the Lord, we've got to take seriously communicating with him, and reading his word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We're blind without his word. That's it for now, friends. And my video on the Trinity will get done. I didn't work on it yesterday. I've done a little bit this morning. And I'm thinking I'm probably going to take off. And I've got a lot. I have got a lot. But I think I'm going to condense it down to make it like a 20-minute video because I know if it's any longer than that, nobody will watch it. And I'm trying to 
get it condensed down now and it'll be up in a day or two. I know I've said that for a while, but it is coming, I promise, and it's going to be good. And it's not from me, it's from God and the Holy Spirit. We've got the triune God, which is God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. All three are God. All three were at the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth. You think Jesus didn't come along until he was born in a manger, but the word says he was right there with God and the Holy Spirit when God was creating, God the Father was creating the heavens and the earth. So I'll explain all that to you better very soon. I love you, friends. Y'all have a wonderful day. Stay warm. Stay safe. If you're on the other side of the world, stay cool. Stay hydrated. Stay safe. I love every one of you, and I appreciate every one of you way more than you know.